that includes the uh, intraoral examination and extraoral examination so first we will start with the intraoral examination just assume the patient is in front of you and you have to do the examination of the patient's teeth so we will start with the uh, intraoral examination that is in use that it will involve the examination of all teeth and the surrounding structures first we will look for the missing teeth and uh, we'll look for if there is uh, how many teeth are present and we also have to look at it is important and uh, if there is any deciduous teeth present and uh, what is the dentition it is permanent mixed or uh, okay next uh, we have to look if the pay uh, if there is any carious teeth heavily filled or abscess teeth and if there is a teeth that is needed or required filling or there is a teeth that require extraction and uh, we also look for the oral hygiene if it's good poor or excellent or it is the uh, hygiene is fair then we have to note it okay it requires scaling or any other surgical procedure so make sure there is a note for all of you that make sure patient must be medically or dentally fit before we start orthodontic treatment if the next uh, we'll look for if there is spacing or diastema present between the two teeth in internal examination if there is a teeth that is uh, showing it is non vital teeth it just means that it is rcd treated teeth okay and showing this color teeth if there is present and if there is fracture teeth and missing teeth extra supernumerary teeth abnormal size of the teeth germinated teeth and uh, a number of already extracted teeth the next thing that uh, is important in oral examination is uh, the deviation of the central line like if there is deviation of central line in upper and lower arch you can also note this in intraoral examination next we'll look for uh, labial frenum normal or abnormal labial frenum oral hygiene like if there is periodontal condition gingivitis or acute ulcerative gingivitis bleeding gums periodontitis and uh, if there is no abnormal size or abnormal action of the tongue cleft lip and any other abnormality found in the tooth classification of malocclusion found in anterior posterior direction and addition we have already discussed so internally we will look for vertical uh, like uh, internally of course we will look for open bite, deep bite, over jet and over bite in horizontal direction we will look for the cross bite so there are different cross bites like anterior, posterior, unilateral, bilateral so next uh, uh, internally uh, like I have already discussed you can look in this picture that uh, the upper in upper arch you can see that it is shifted towards right while the lower arch is shifted towards left so midline is very important in to observe the, uh, in both upper and lower arches okay you also have to look for the curve of his P if it's excessive, moderate, normal or if the curve of his P is straight these are different over jet and over bite uh, uh, like uh, uh, values you can see there is a 2 to 4 mm over jet and normal or 4 to 8 and it is mild 8 to 12 mm moderate and more than 12 it is severe okay Next, of what is very important, it is molar classification. What is the molar classification? If you will know the molar classification, we can easily identify what is the condition of the patient. Like this class 1 or class uh, paying 2. Class 2 have two types, like it made uh, full cusp or it is a half cusp unit, okay? And the class 3. You have to also have to do all the class of, like uh, there are also class 2 half cusp and uh, class 2 full unit, okay? like incisor but there is division one and division two but well all are the same we have to know so next we will ask about is the internal examination in extra oral examination in this we can see extra oral examination we have to know for the examination of the lips competent lips and incompetent lips incompetent lips maybe because of the over jet okay or any other condition uh, symmetry of the face symmetrical or as you can see in the picture that uh, there is left symmetry right symmetry that is if there is left or right symmetry and it is asymmetrical evidence there is no one because it is symmetrical okay frankfurt mandibular plane angle it all tells about the patient is long face short face or square face the different uh, shades of the face okay and the next is the facial height uh, increased decreased uh, or it is uh, just normal facial height and a apical based relationship with what is the class skeletal pattern okay what is class one skeletal class one skeletal or class two or class three like if there's class one then it is the normal genetic mandible okay if there's class two it is the retrogenetic mandible if there's class three skeletal pattern it is the progenetic mandible okay the next in extra oral examination important to note is uh, in vertical direction you will see for uh, uh, 
what is uh, abnormal causing open bite or deep bite you can see in the first picture the boy is having open bite before and after pictures and uh, of course there is there is open bite uh, you can see the tongue okay and the teeth the space between in uh, the upper and lower teeth and uh, the second picture you can see that uh, the patient is having deep bite and before and after pictures you can clearly just differentiate it the next is the uh, extra examination you will look for in horizontal direction you will look for like uh, what is the condition that is causing cross bite okay we'll do a tmj examination if there is any problem tmj the joint okay if there is and examination of the thumb or finger if there is any doubt of thumb or finger sucking habit and uh, in extra examination you also look for the profile like uh, uh, class 1 straight straight profile or it is the convex or it is a uh, uh, concave okay in convex uh, the mandible is retrogonathic con and class 2 in concave it is a uh, prognathic okay and uh, prognathic mandible and concave okay so it is different profile it is very